Hello everybody, uh, Ethan here, back with another video for you guys, and uh, today is episode one of my new series, Blips. Now, if you guys haven't seen the intro to that, you guys should totally check it out, it'll be in the description and whatnot, but anyway, let's jump straight into it. So, this episode is going to be about DMI, or commonly referred to as well as DMI Link. Now, this is an Intel-based technology that is um, designed for computers. Now, what it is, it stands for Direct Media Interface. Basically, it's a way for various components on a motherboard and processor to connect to each other. Now, in specific, there are three versions of this, which I'll go over in pretty hefty detail here in just a moment, but we are on version 3.0 now, now as of the latest chipsets from Intel, and 3.0 is kind of a big deal. Now, anyway, jumping into DMI 1.0, again, DMI standing for Direct Media Interface. It was developed in 2004 and connected the North and South Bridge, which, as many know, you don't really have a North and South Bridge on computers anymore, but obviously back then you did. Now, there was also an enterprise version of it also called ESI, or Enterprise Southbridge Interface. It was essentially the same thing, just with a different name, so I won't get into hefty detail on that in specific. Now, DMI 1.0 was very similar to PCI Express, and it used four lanes of connection there. So you were looking at a bandwidth of about one gigabyte per second, nothing super major, but back then was a pretty big deal. And it was basically allowing the North and South bridge, bridges to communicate with each other and interconnect so that you could have your USB and stuff like that functioning properly. Now, this was uh, present on the Intel 900 series of chipsets, or the 9XX series chipsets, as some would say. And um, there isn't too much more to say about it, but one last little thing would be that on the mobile, there was actually a two-lane link rather than a four-lane link for the North and South Bridge. Now, that has since kind of shifted and changed a little bit, but back then, you know, they didn't have as good of technology, and so they were running two lanes instead of four lanes, which did hinder mobile performance decently. Now, that is it for DMI 1.0. But to jump to DMI 2.0, which didn't come out until 2011, that's seven years later, kind of a big jump there, but DMI tends to be something that's fairly slowly developed, it seems. It's not something that Intel plans to replace, you know, every year as they release new chipsets or something like that. Now, this links the CPU to the PCH, or Platform Controller Hub, which will actually be in an upcoming episode, but that is basically the North and South Bridge. That, that is the new chipset for Intel. Uh, we don't really have North and South Bridges anymore, even on AMD stuff. It's just not really a thing. So, so anyway, this linked the CPU directly to the PCH rather than linking north and south bridges. Uh, used PCIe lanes for this, and it was also an X4, but it was two gigabytes per second, doubling the bandwidth, basically going from PCI Express 1.0 to 2.0, uh, which was running about 500 megabytes per second in each direction per actual physical lane of PCI Express. Now, uh, it was used with the 2000 through the 6000 series of iCore processors. All the stuff that was on Haswell, Broadwell, that kind of stuff, that was using the DMI 2.0. And so that there was, you know, a little bit interesting to see how long it lasted and how, what wide variety it was on. Now, some of the common chipsets that you guys might know are the Z series of chipsets, which was kind of the enthusiast chipsets X, aside from the X series, which was the super high-end, high-end desktop stuff. Uh, anywhere, anywhere from Z68 all the way up to Z97. So those series of chipsets there were all using DMI 2.0, uh, again, which is PCI Express 2.0 is what it was using to link them, and that was linking the CPU and the PCH. Uh, another common chipset that you guys probably know of and surprisingly still use this was X99, being essentially the last chipset ever to use DMI 2.0. X99, it hindered some of the things that it was capable of doing, but there were a lot of things that the uh, motherboard manufacturers did to try and uh, mitigate for some of that. Now, jumping onto DMI 3.0, which came out August 2015, so it's actually not that old. We're looking at about, you know, two years ago, which isn't that far, far ago, so I mean, it is still pretty new. It'll probably be around for quite a while longer, would be my best guess. I'd give it another five or so years. This uh, double bandwidth, again, to almost four gigabytes per second. Again, using PCI Express, we're on PCI Express 3.0 now, it's a gigabyte per second in each direction. So that's why we were able to have four gigabytes per second on these X4 links. Uh, and that's four gigabytes per second in each direction. Again, linking the CPU and the PCH, that hasn't changed, unlike the transition between DMI 1.0 and DMI 2.0. Now, this started basically with Skylake, 
Um, so that was kind of a big deal there. A lot of you probably saw that on like the uh, Z170 series chipsets where they had a lot of interesting things such as more M.2 drive support, more USB support, faster USB support, more SATA support on some of them. Those were all directly related to the fact that the PCH or the chipset had a better link to the CPU, therefore being able to provide better bandwidth for more connections. This is why we were seeing actual M.2 drives running over a PCI Express 3.0 link and not using up your PCI Express lanes, uh, the 16 lanes built into the Skylake CPUs on that platform. So definitely a huge benefit there. It was about time for that jump where we could finally run storage on a uh, better interface without pulling uh, you know, PCI Express lanes directly from the CPU. So DMI Link 3.0 was a big deal. Now it is also used on Z270 and you know any of the 100 and 200 series chipsets really, not just the Z series, um, that is using DMI 3.0, allowing for all kinds of really great connectivity. And we're seeing that that's kind of when M.2 started becoming popular, which uh, for those of you who don't know, is just an SSD form factor that runs over PCI Express. Uh, it started becoming really popular when DMI 3.0 came out, which was kind of overlooked by everybody. They don't really think about that, but it was the ability to not use up your onboard CPU PCI Express lanes uh, and still be able to have full speed M.2 drives running at PCI Express X4. Now X299 is obviously going to be using this as well. I haven't heard anything about them using any like DMI 4.0 or something. I don't see why they would because this is a pretty good interlink here. There's no real reason for that. So that concludes it for DMI 3.0. I'm sure there will be a 4.0 at some point that will again double the bandwidth probably once PCI Express 4.0 becomes popular. Now thank you everybody for watching the first episode of Blips again on DMI direct media interface which is an uh, as I described at the beginning an Intel technology and I just want to say don't forget to like subscribe leave a comment let me know what you think of this series and if you're interested in something like this something where you know we have a really hefty breakdown of something that's fairly simple so that you understand all the details of it rather than just trying to explain something complicated very quickly it's more so explaining something simple in a you know fairly good amount of time allowing you guys to fully grasp what in this case DMI was Again, thank you everybody for watching.